Welcome to the AM Synth Studio. Today we're going to search for the lost modules of the ALP 2500 modular synthesizer. Shrouded in mystery and hidden in obscurity for over 50 years, it's time to discover what these modules did and if they can be reimagined into Eurorack. Back in 1970 when ALP was Tonus and the 2500 modular synthesizer was called the Model 2000, the marketing machine at Tonus set off to create brochures about the new synth. No social media or even email, they relied on coloured paper, black and white photos to get their news out. In October 1970, the 2500 was launched. The initial marketing consisted of a short brochure and a detailed user manual. By tracking down these documents, especially the various early versions, I've discovered what the full module release plan was for the ALP 2500, and it will surprise you. The initial basic set of analog synth modules, like the VCO, VCF, envelope generators and VCAs, were complemented by more advanced designs that we now recognise as the 1047 state variable filter, the 1045 synthesizer voice and the 1036 dual sample and hold. The next set of synthesizer modules would have expanded the capabilities of the 2500 even further, but unfortunately they were never manufactured or seen beyond the occasional prototype. The full list of planned modules is revealed in the 2500 user manual of 1970 and stands at an amazing total of 15. That's enough scene setting, let's dive in and uncover the lost modules of the LP2500 starting with the 1035. The 1035 module existed as a working prototype and it can be seen in the first 2500 synth that was photographed in 1970 but it never made it into production. It is a triple modulator with three independent balance modulators with six preamps in front of these. The balance modulator had already appeared in the 1005 module and the circuit was to be reused in the 2600 along with a new preamplifier. The 1035 is therefore easy to work out, six 2600 preamps and three ring mods. The AM Sense AM1035 replica emits the preamps and delivers three balance modulators. Each input can be either DC or AC coupled, the modulators can be used as VCAs. An additional feature carried over from the prototype is a slide switch that selects whether the audio signals are modulated or mixed. This is very useful as a set of three dual input mixers, but also as a way of previewing the signal levels before they are modulated. The 1042 module is mentioned in the 1970 Tonus catalogue as coming soon, but no prototypes were made. The module provides three discrete transistor VCAs and would have used the circuit from the 1005 and the 1006 modules as a basis. The 1042 is therefore easy to recreate. Three transistor VCAs, each with two audio inputs and a CV input. I've also replicated the additional features of the 2600 VCA, where there are separate inputs for DC or AC coupled signals. DC coupling allows the use of CV signals, whilst the AC input eliminates the offset of VCOs. An orange LED shows the signal level coming out of each VCA. The 1031 module is mentioned in the 1970 catalogue as a dual multipurpose filter with five modes the fifth mode being peak. It is easy to work out that this is a 12 dB state variable filter and the designer would have been Dennis Collin. Dennis was the key electronic engineer on the 2500 project and he went on to design more state variable filters including the Oberheim SEM filter. Dennis left ALP at some point in the 70s and joined Aries Music in 1975 where he designed yet another state variable filter, the AR327. It was specifically called a multi-purpose filter and it has the same circuit topology as the ARP1047, but uses modern OTA chips and has that fifth mode, peak. A peak filter is a frequency filter that passes a narrow band of frequencies and stops all other frequencies. A peak filter is a very narrow bandpass filter and the opposite of a notch filter. The 1031 also has a clever resonance controlling circuit, which is significantly more advanced than in the SEM or the 1047. It is this design I am since have replicated as the 1031 multi-purpose filter with a massive credit and shout out to the incredible skills of Dennis Collin, a true genius. One of the most unusual modules that Turner's envisaged was the 1040 Noisilator, a combination of the 1004 VCO with the 1016 noise module but stripped of its level controls. Rather surprisingly the module did make it to prototype stage and there is a picture in one of the 1970 brochures white, pink and slow random noise, but no level controls. Turners were very good at combining two circuits into one module, 
such as the 1005 and 1006, but this combination of VCO and noise wasn't to be. The AMP2500 is known for just two sequencer modules, the 1027 10-step sequencer and the 1050 mix sequencer. It has always seemed a bit limited. In 1970, Turners were planning a much larger sequencer subsystem with more modules and a sequencer preset capability. Only one of these modules has appeared as a prototype, so the true depth of 2500 sequencing capability was never realised. In the 1970 user manual, Turners explained the objectives of the sequencer subsystem and mentioned three more sequencer modules, as well as a built-in voltage-controlled envelope generator. Modules on the sequencer subsystem were interconnected by gate position butts, which contained all 10 gate positions from a 1027 sequencer as control voltages on a 15-pin DIN subconnector. This enabled sequencer modules within a cabinet to be driven by the 1027. When designing the Behringer 2500 replicas, we decided to include the gate position bus using rear-facing 12-way IDC sockets and a ribbon cable. This enables the Eurorack 2500 sequencer subsystem to be greatly expanded with any number of new modules. The 1024 module, the double width 1027 sequencer with its unusual 10 step positions, was a bit unwieldy and costly. Turners came up with the idea of a single width mini sequencer with just 8 step positions called the 1024. It never made it to prototype stage but the eight positions lived on within the 1050 and other sequencer modules. The Behringer 1027 module has eight steps rather than 10, and it covers the features of the 1024 module. One of the modules that did make it to prototype stage and photographs in the Tonus brochures was the 1026 preset voltages. It provides 16 preset voltages in two channels with a preview push button for each row and eight position gate inputs on the front panel. The 1026 is a very useful module as it enables preset voltages to be stored and then recalled by a sequencer or by individual position gates in any random order. The AM Sense 1026 replicates the Tones version with an expansion module providing the eight position gate inputs. A big expansion of the sequencer subsystem was the 1028 module. It provides an additional three channels of variable control voltages driven by the gate position bus I presume this was 10 steps and a double width module. The 1028 has a preset capability based on plugging cards with tiny preset potentiometers. Whether this was for just one column or all three is unknown, as no pictures of the module have ever been found. The module never made it to prototype stage, and to be honest, a second 1027 could be used to do the same job. The AM Sense 1028 replicates one column of the original with eight step positions driven by the gate position. The module has both two volt and 10 volt outputs, making it particularly attractive to use oscillators with a two volt output and filters with the 10 volt output. Turner's called the 1028 a slave module, which clearly was gonna be linked up to the 1027. The 1037 module is mentioned in the Turner's catalog and 2500 user manuals as a dual voltage controlled envelope generator which can generate both linear and exponential envelopes. The module is also considered to be part of the sequencer subsystem and is mentioned as a built-in voltage controlled envelope generator that has independent control of envelope or formant at each position. Unfortunately the module never made it into a prototype stage and it would have been a very useful module complementing the limitations of the 1003, 1033, which have very short envelope phases. Typically the attack time is just two seconds at maximum. AM Sense have reimagined what the 1037 could be like. Initially as an 8HP voltage controlled ADSR that connects to the gate position bus and allows the envelope to be activated by any of the gate positions. A push button selects the gate position, which is displayed on a vintage seven segment LED display. A dual 1037 module will also be recreated with the full functionality of both exponential and linear ADSR slopes. Well, it's time to wrap up this video, even though there are another seven modules that were planned but lost in time. From oscilloscopes to fixed filters and dual reverb modules, a fascinating set of modules that never happened. 
We hope you liked this voyage of discovery into the synth and sequencer module ideas at Tonus in 1970, over 50 years ago. AM Synths have reimagined six of the lost modules in Neurorack and we'll launch them in the spring of 2024. Please check our website for details. These new modules add new sounds and capability to the Behringer 2500 ecosystem, but also to any modular setup.